Let's see. Do you guys want to start with uh, Cliche's game or do you want to start with uh, Shinchen Sales game? What do you guys want to do? Why is everything going to a vote today? I should just decide. Be like, forget all of you guys. I'm dictator bats. I make decisions. Remember, dictators always get dethroned by their most trusted ones? Um. I'm not really a dictator. But alright, um, we're gonna do uh, Christmas game. I'm not sure if we're gonna do all of it though, because there are two games that I wanna hit, and both of these games have the exact same uh, trait in both games. There's like a really good, there's like an, an interesting thing that both games do. And that thing is they are good at building off of their opponent. Because anyone can just go around and just boom, plop a stone on like a star point or like all the star points or you could make um like a chinese fuseki and then just like build off that in gote make a san rinsei and just keep building off that in gote like whatever that's really really easy to do because it's easy to find the largest extension on the board right what's difficult to do is to use your opponent's stones to build up what you're doing and the contrast between these ideas is one idea you build, you're in gote, your opponent can start answering whatever it is you're trying to build up. The other one is you're building, your opponent's watching it happen, and he can't really do anything about it because he has to answer you for other reasons. I mean, it's... It, it exists, it's fine, it's good, but I prefer the other. I like someone attacking to get the profit or to get the expansion that they're looking to get, and not so much, look at me, I can play a star point, I'm not blind. I'm less impressed by the whole Gote build-up thing. And both of these kind of feature the Incente build-up thing. So let's start with, um, let's get these names on the board, actually. So in the first game that we're going to go over, we're going to go over a Nine Don. You all know who the nine don is versus a four don. Um, there we go. You are four don. You are now nine don. Uh, Cause she's black. And we start off on the three four cornerstone. Gote build up then gives opponent much more flexibility than when building up in Sente with shoulders, etc. I presume is what you're saying. Um, yeah, because if you're building in Gote, then it's your opponent's turn. They can immediately respond to whatever you're trying to build. But if you're pressuring your opponent, if you're getting Sente moves off your opponent while you're building up, then they can't really do that because they're busy responding to whatever it is you're doing, whatever threats you're putting against them. If they don't respond to that, then uh, you're, you can follow up I would hope, in a threatening manner, since they ignored what was supposed to be Sente. So essentially the game begins off uh, with Keji taking black, he grabs a 3-4 point, white goes dual 4-4s four and grabs a large knight enclosure, as we can see here. Now this is a fairly straightforward opening. Uh, black gets approached, takes territory rather than pincer, and that's completely A-OK. -okay. So from here we can expect, or we might expect if we uh, are up to date on modern games, that white's going to play here, black's going to back off, and then we're probably going to see some kind of an attachment uh, by white. White decides to play this instead which you don't see too often nowadays, but still very interesting. He's going to build up a wall to go with the 4-4 four, four points on the bottom of the board. Makes sense because 4-4 four, four is, you know, generally for influence, and now we're getting a wall here. Walls are usually for influence, so it all seems to go together. Uh, let's see, we don't do that. We do this instead. Get Atari, there we go. Now you could, the danger of course, I'm trying to build this way 
is sometimes your opponent could like play here and then maybe you're gonna be stuck in the small avalanche. So there are a few complicated variations here. We don't see it here though. We see fairly straightforward build, nice and strong. Doesn't play here though. There's a lot of easy ways to reduce this little wall here, starting with this one. So I've noticed a lot of professionals shying away from this particular attack. And instead play nice and strong. Uh, that is true, Gobaduck. Black does get a very big corner if you attach from that position. Whoops. Um, where is my chat? That's my chat. So, Black approaches. White backs off. Black gets a base, as we can see here, which White will put pressure on. If we go and play elsewhere right now, you have to consider the fact that this can still be attacked. White's a little bit unsettled now. This is an interesting move because a lot of people are tempted to play the 3-3 right now, but the 3-3 is a little bit uh, small, and it's also quite gote. So we're not going to actually play the 3-3 because we don't want to have to deal with that. Instead, we're going to play a larger move of the enclosure. If we uh, swip that around, then we respond here, black doesn't. So then black gets to approach. And then what are we going to do from here? Are we going to back off and just kind of let him build up? We have a potential uh, double wing on the board right now. So we probably don't want to deal with the left. We have to like split the top. Kind of annoying. So we go ahead and close. Splits the bottom, so does black. And this is where everything gets interesting. Because like so far everything's kind of peaceful and happy. But that's gonna that's gonna stop right now. We're no longer gonna be peaceful and happy. Black has two options right now. Black could play here, but the problem with this is there's a lot of ways for white to keep putting pressure on us. Uh, could keep pressuring on it this way, because you'll notice that this is no longer uh, an I with the presence of uh, H4. We could cap this, and then next time to the left, there's like a lot of things that we can do to try to put pressure on these stones. So black plays all the way over here. Now, if you're thinking, but wait a minute, isn't D2 and J3 too far apart? Then you'd be, tr yeah, yeah, it, it really would be. That is really far apart. And white would be like, you know what, I agree with you, sir. I would like to subscribe to your newsletter. I think that is too far apart as well, so I'm going to do something about that. Now, from here, again, we have expectations. If all we know is Jaseki, then we're probably like, okay, we're going to see this now, maybe, and then maybe White's going to play here, and then maybe we're going to live in the corner. But then, then lonely little J3 is no longer, no longer with us. He, he's been, he's been forgotten. It's so sad. And this might even be Sente. So what? Is White going to just keep building up now? Is he just like, going to keep growing this like area here? Could be a problem. Instead, Black comes out. White follows him. J3 turned into an orphan. Yeah, exactly. We don't we don't want to orphan stuff. So white's coming out or black's coming out now. And you can see that white's just like, no. Not gonna play here because then I guess we're just gonna connect underneath. And that's a pretty decent result. I mean if we get all of those in Sente, and then maybe even steal the corner, 
That's really good, right? We, our opponent is disgusting on like the third and second line. Lost a corner, needs to extend. That means we're going to get Sente, take a large point. At this point, we're kind of putting our opponent in check. Like, you got to figure out what to do in this game, otherwise you're going to lose it. Because you're hemorrhaging points, you didn't really get much done with this attack. And now, that's, that's bad. Buy a vacuum cleaner? Do not understand the rock. Oh, okay. No. So, white jumps out. Black plays the Hane. Like, can I kill your stone? White says no. And then Black plays a move that I think, out of all of the observers here, I think only Gobaduk would probably be able to find it. No offense to uh, Red, who's also a Fordhan. But I'm not going to have him guess because I'm pretty sure he's already seen it. Oh, you. Okay. Red wants, Red wants to redeem himself. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Red's going to get it too. All right. Both of you got it. Oh no, not G4, I'm sorry. Though, wait, what? You want to play G4? That's just going to hurt you, dude. This isn't shape. Oh, just kidding, okay. But it's I don't see this move a lot in amateur games. So let's look I highlighted my mouse over G6. Okay, so Chad apparently just re just told me I gave away the game completely. But I believe, yeah, I, I believe Red did cheat. But now we have to figure out what this is. Let's say we try to kill this move, like, uh, how are we going to kill the move? Um, bam, move's dead, right? Why doesn't this work? I'm hovering my mouse over E1. No one can cheat. What happens if e what happens if we try to kill this stone? What do we do then? Gobaduck definitely cheated. <laughs> yeah, Gobaduck. He's a cheater, man. Why why do, why do I have a problem? What do we do? What do we do? Yeah, that cuts a bit of an annoyance. Because how do we respond to this? We can't we have to do something like this, right? In order to not get the Atari through? Go with that E1 only move. Yeah, totally. And then, of course, obviously, the problem with this is we're about to get the stone killed, like, straight out. I guess we can save it, but... Pain. I guess you... Do you, have, do you really have to drive that? I mean, isn't that good enough? Do you, would you really drive this? I guess you could. Um, let's see, what else could we do? Uh, this is fairly obvious. If we do this, I mean, you just opened up this completely. So there's a lot of moves that can't be responded to. So white backs out. Black gets the move that he wants, but this time it's in Gote. Like, he wants this move, but it's in Gote now. So, we can go and do this. Now, forcing moves here are amazing. A lot of the subtle differences between amateurs and pros is they'll always look for forcing moves. So, here's a forcing move. Kills off our stub, but it was never coming out anyway. We orphaned it a long time ago. And then we have a really amazing uh, uh, move that we can play. We're not going to play this. Because that doesn't really give us shape at all, and it kind of just encourages our opponent to move like this. This is not shape that we want to see. We don't want to hand off fifth line and no shape to ourselves in the process. This is bad. This is, this is no good. So instead, black plays here. Now it admits that yes, you can take one stone of mine if you want to, but we're going to have shape, so who cares? And obviously if we get cut, which I don't think we get cut here, do we get cut? No we don't. Didn't think so. 
And obviously, if we get cut, we're in pretty good position to deal with that. We're ready to surround the left-hand side. And we still have to figure out how not to die with the F6 stones. So this, this was a good shape point. This was a really good shape point. Um, same thing, this different order. We wouldn't want to do this for the same reason. Anyone who thinks this is an acceptable result, knew it's not. This is just going to get beat up. This is an acceptable result if your opponent can't fight at all. So yeah, this is pretty good shape. All white can do is just be like, okay, two space extension. That's what we're gonna do now. Fixes this shape even more, which I love again, because if we did the whole cutting thing, we got influence, we could surround the left-hand side. Can't surround the left-hand side, so we're gonna make sure our shape's fine. So we could have played a large point, but he's like, no, I'm not going to do that because you can poke out my shape now that you're strong on the left-hand side. So I'm not going to try to take this larger point and leave myself with a shape problem. I'm going to fix my shape and not be greedy. So that's amazing. And now some people would look at this and be like, but what happens if I fix my shape and then and then I don't get this large move in. Well, that, we're, exactly, we're not gonna get the large move in. He's gonna take it from us. But now we don't have infinity points hemorrhaging out of our ears because we protected our shape on the bottom of the board. Push. Base. Extend. Pretty good corner in the upper left. Some people I know would uh, completely disagree with this move. And they would want to play here because they're afraid of this. They're afraid of the idea that this is going to be in trouble, but it can still come out, so it's fine. Uh, back. So, okay, we play here. Comes on out. White probes. Trying to see how much Aji is in there. Now, so far, we haven't really seen... Can white invade D18? Good question. We're seeing an invasion right now. Not invading D18. If you invade D18, I guess you're trying to go here. That's difficult though, right? That's tough to live with. I mean, even this makes it difficult to live with. The normal move is F16, F17, C16. Uh, A normal move is what, this? Uh, that's not right. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Anyway. Shoulder, oh, shoulder before the invasion. Oh, there, there, and then? C16? Ah, okay. That's a little dangerous. This turn is not going to be friends with these two stones. I think he wanted to live or do nothing because of the, t the weaker on top of the board with the two-space ascension. Because two-space, keep in mind, is not uh, immortal. So that could be a little bit ugly. So I can kind of see why he went uh, into the invasion deep. Bats, I have to ask, is setting conditional moves okay when playing somebody? What do you mean conditional moves?
Not sure what you mean by conditional moves. Anyway, so he plays here. Hane for Aji, Black says die in the corner. And now he decides to just make sure that the outside group is stronger. As we can see here, now you don't have to worry about it. He strengthened himself and now he's going to go attack the uh, upper right hand corner. So this is kind of what I was referring to earlier. The upper left hand, upper right hand corner isn't uh, settled yet. So he was using the upper left hand corner to gain strength for his top group. So we can go back and try and attack it. So we see a turn here. White's going to keep pace. Going after the shape is the only option. Plays the Hane, threatens double Atari. Now this was a little bit strange, I thought. I mean, it gets him a stone. But it seems like he's hurting his, his own stones in the press on the left-hand side. But maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's not true. Now, we're still not alive here yet, right? We can't go back and live here right now. Because everyone can figure this corner out. So black still has to be alive. Uh, attempt number one, can I do anything down here? No, we're going to protect. Uh, attempt number two, strengthening the group. Didn't yield the Aji, so time to run away. White tides to cut through. Interesting choice. Oops, my bad, no. There we go. Gets to live, but we're surrounded now. White takes large points. His corner again. Now the question is, what can Black possibly do? Because so far I mentioned that this game is about building in Sente, and we haven't really seen much of that just yet. So clearly, what we can learn from this is I'm a liar. Right? Is it possible to build anything for black here in Sente? Or am I just lying about what game we're reviewing? Did I make up an excuse just to look over uh, one of uh, Kuchy's games? Kisaku says L12. L13 might be possible. That would not be a build move. That would be a rip your face off and eat it move. Now, before we look at the building, I want to point out one thing that might be missing to some of the double digit cues who might be watching this game either on YouTube later or currently in chat. Can we cut through here as white? Is that possible? Can white lean on this to break out? What do you think? Is it possible to break out here as white? If you think the answer is yes, you say yes. What if I say no? Because if you're breaking out here, you're letting yourself get cut, right? That's pretty... You can break out, but you might be killing yourself in the process. Because the upper left... The lower left, sorry, now needs to be alive and not dead right now. But that's tough. Plus, the bamboo joint doesn't make two eyes. So if you defend this, then suddenly you've got either that or this. So it's a 
possibility that we can't actually break out here without losing the game completely. That's very, very dangerous. So, despite the fact that this is a large knight, it's unlikely that anything's making it through this alive. So that's how we kind of know that we can begin building, because we can look at, not that first stone, but we can kind of look at this and see that we kind of got a wall situation going on here. Okay? So black first pokes here, because threatening to cut through is, uh, or not cut through, but threatening to cut, rather, would make the top really, really painful, given that it doesn't really have any eyes yet. So white says, I want to connect that up, you're not cutting me. And now here's where amateur and professional play breaks again. A lot of amateurs would be like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I've got what I wanted. I'm going to make some kind of gote move now to build up. But that means your opponent can immediately counterattack you. Right? So we could go and we could look at, I don't know, something like this maybe? Like we can get a few points, but then our opponent turns around and gets sente and then just builds off of what we're doing, and that would be a little bit awkward. So this is why building in Gote is tough. Because then your opponent can sit there and think, well, what can I do now to use what you're doing to my advantage? They still want E1. It's not E1, I'm sorry. So alright, we have not that, but this. And rather than play a Gote move, Black continues to look for those Sente moves. So here we see this. Looks like he's in trouble. Looks like he's still in trouble. I think we can just connect, right? No, we don't. We do this. There we go. More forcing moves. More forcing moves. And even now, more forcing moves. So you can see he's slowly but surely working on that center, but he's working on it in such a way that he's saying, you know what, I kind of want to build, and if you say no to me, I'm going to kill, I'm going to split you, or I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to do something terrible to your stones. So here we go with this. Now we can um, take our, revive our one stone and save our, what is this, four, five stones? White jumps out. That threatens this. So this is forcing move two. That's forcing granted. Trying to reverse it. Plays the Atari. White says not sente. And keeps pressing on uh, White's points. So he was kind of able to build up the middle a bit more. But he was able to do it without White being able to launch uh, any kind of effective counterattack. This, of course, has to be ignored. Because we do actually have to come in here. White set or black says get out. So white, black manages to keep a large portion of that. And keep in mind, this absolutely can't be broken into right now because there's a very solid black wall in the middle. And then this has to live. So this would have to live. And then this would just wind up getting, not that. And then this would just wind up getting killed with nowhere to go. And that's of course assuming this even actually lives because I have my doubts about that too. Now the downside is we are giving up a couple of points for this. And this is where uh, I mostly go wrong and when I tried this in my games where I tried, I wind up giving away way too many points and was worth what I got. 
That's the, that's the tough side of deal of trying to uh, do this. White comes in or tries to. But now black's going after large points. Making sure there's nothing here. Now there's no way to come in. Just keep squeezing him for his eye shape. Now we're alive. Before black goes back and answers. Doesn't answer immediately. But takes all the sente moves again first before going back and answering. Plays the hane. Gets cut. And then now we have this. Atari. Careful counting says I can't answer that right now, because if I do... We can't take, uh, what is this, M11? So we're probably going to get an answer over here by black. K12 wrecks the Moyo. What's K12? Um, it does destroy a bit of the Moya, but we're still making quite a few points as black here. This is a very large corner. I mean, this is, like, all connected up now, right? And even that is getting anchored into another corner yet again. So he goes here... Keeps them out. Further reductions. And from here, the forcing moves that I was, uh, I wanted to show you guys to get a look at uh, building in Sente are more or less done. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to link the game in question in chat, and if you're watching this on YouTube later on, I will be having a link in the description down below. You can check that out and see how the game ends if you so wish. Those of you who can count have a good idea already, and those of you who know who Mr. Cagey is, you know you can't cage the Cagey. He wins his games, man. That's what he does. So that is the link to that. Second game features much of the same, only it's not from a... Uh, it's not a Kaji game. It's actually a uh, Shinzen So game. who, if you don't know who that is, is a Korean player up and coming, probably going to be on East Hedo's level at some point. But right now, sadly, he's being a lazy bum and he's only... He's, he's not nine on like uh, good old Keji is. He's, he's only a five don still. So let's change the names here. To match the new players, we've got Kang Danyun, who you might remember. He's a Korean player, his name pops up every once in a while. Uh, let's see, this time it's White that's the 9 Don, and Shin is the 5 Don. So let's go there. Okay. So in this game, I would like to say that we don't see the orthodox opening. I'm lying to you, though. We do see the orthodox opening. Sorry. Uh, odd move here is we don't see any of the common common ideas on how to deal with the orthodox, like the inside or the more outdated splitting. Kind of weird. He takes this enclosure, which... Black just says, okay, I'll I'll just go and take this then. And I want to point out immediately, yes, this is Gote building, but don't worry, it gets more interesting. White approaches, Black backs off, and builds up the left-hand side. Of course, we don't want our opponent getting double wings, so we are going to split because he wants this really badly now. 
I'm gonna go jump like so. White backs off, black comes in, and you know this is not going to be defended. The 3-3 three, three we've already said is slow, and no one would ever def take this point here. If you take this point now as white and you give black this, this is like the best base black could ever ask for. Because from here, black can do whatever he wants without fear. White, black can begin thinking about approaching here because you can't really lean on the left hand side. Can think about uh, invading it B or C or worse because again, you can't really use the strength that you're going to get from it to attack the base on the left hand side of black because it's just too strong. Now, interesting thing here is white plays this. What does white want from this? Misclick? Nope, not misclick. What does white want from this? Influence, thickness, yes! Let's imagine white ba or black backing off and playing normally. Like, playing something like this, right? So, we can poke and be like, what do you want now? Like, well, I'm, I'm going to do that again. And then we can kind of picture this, and suddenly the top has just grown a lot. We have, like, this wall coming out of nowhere because of what we now see here. So we're going to turn around and kind of like reduce the entire upper left hand side of the board now because Moyo, crazy. So Black says, you know what, no Moyo for you, I'm fighting this. Black says, and I'm fighting you. Now here's an interesting uh, point, we're going to actually get Sente. Or we're going to try to get strength in Sente in order to deal with uh, White's two stones. Place the high, control the shape. We are going to play here because we do not respond this way because, ouch. Th there's really no good way of responding to this one. I mean, we can hunt if there's an Atari there. That's not fun. Um, we can Hane over here, but then we're losing two stones, I guess, or something like this. I don't know. It's like just bad shape all around, right? White goes for that uh, influence again. So at this point, it looks like white is the one who's, you know, getting uh, that that framework by attacking, yeah? So it looks like he's getting all that influence by fighting and putting pressure, not really playing the moves in Gote. White at or black Atari. Control shape. Control shape. At this point, uh, it looks like Kang Dan Yun is actually doing pretty well. He's got the two stones on the bottom, he's attacking. He's got the top. The left is not completely alive yet. So what do we do here is white, or is black? Psycta says that we're going to cut that without thinking. Sadly, we have to. We don't really have much of a choice, do we? If we don't cut right now, and we just like settle with something, or we just run with something, we're going to be on the defensive probably for the rest of the game. We only way to get out of the defensive is really to go on the offensive. Well, okay, two, two options here. Sometimes you can get a shape uh, in an area where there's a bunch of weak stones. like We get our shape there because our opponent can't defend themselves in two places at once. Uh, alternative is to just pick fights. We just have to figure out what our stones can do. So yeah, we cut. 
defended. Threaten to capture. Only way out of this is to play here. Making sure that we're alive is really good. Atari. This is also pretty good because we can threaten to kill. Atari. White takes. Black extends, threatening to bring out these lovely little stones at C6. So white kills off those. Allowing black to start turning around this group in the center. This move was weird. I thought this was a little bit strange. We don't usually poke at cutting points, but he kind of is now. Guess he's worried that uh, white, that black's gonna kind of come out and invade the top. Eight seventeen a problem. Do, 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 do. Um, the invasion itself must be a problem. Mm hmm. Black's like, Aji. White's like, cut. And Black says, Aji! Defense, no Aji remaining. White says, I'm gonna live. Or Black does rather. Comes on out. Let's make sure we're alive here. Let's make sure we're alive here. And attacking. So it looks like we're not really doing much again. We're kind of just under attack. But that's where things get interesting. Black plays the Atari and then jumps up saying, I'm one stone from killing you. You can't let me connect up my stones pokes, and then says, okay, I'm going to make sure those stones are dead. White then leads on the top group. Pokes at the shape. Black says, I don't care. Defends himself. Black follows. Defends himself. This is an interesting move because now we can't play really, really easy moves like the uh, small knight at K12. Defense corner. And here you can see we're just, like, we're just looking for, uh, for Aji. It's like if our opponent plays here, that there's gonna be there's gonna be a huge huge problems right so we have to play whoops my bad so we place here to defend against it black says no goes after corner black says go have corner because I have your two stones so it looks like we can see what black is after. Black is trying to build up the center. And he was after the center the minute he began turning. Because these center moves work very, very well with the framework he has on the board. Like we can even picture a move down here and realize it's not just the right hand side of the board he's developing, it's also the bottom of the board he's developing and he's kind of putting pressure and threatening white while he's trying to get all of this fun, st uh, fun stuff. So white had to respond. Now we lean on the top because we're trying to get strength again. And more strength and more strength and more strength. As we can see here. Exchange made, and now it's time to invade. So white invades. Now that we have the invasion point here, 
we can decide how best to use this invasion to try to maximize what we have. And Black says, I'm going to cap your stone, because where is it going to go? Even if he lives here, if a stone gets played over here, it doesn't really matter, does it? Like if we picture like do 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 Look at me, I'm aliving. Is this really a successful invasion? If everything that you just reduced reappears on the bottom of the board? Maybe not. Maybe not. So White says, all right, that's a pretty big point. You can't have it. Poke. Puts pressure on the stone that was not responded to. Not defended, rather. Trying to use all of the Aji to do something. Cloudy Outlaw, thank you for following the channel. Trying to live, trying to live. Looks like we're living. But now we have all this influence, we can use it to attack the extension. So, he's fighting to use, to build his influence. And then he's using his influence that he got from fighting to fight something else. This is actually a pretty aggressive game. Though it's very much in the realm of we're using our influence to attack and not just to build up, we're not really playing just Gote moves, all of that sort of thing. We are trying to use our influence uh, to attack things, we're trying to get influence not in Gote but by attacking things and keeping pressure on our opponent. It's very different from let's just say Something uh, like getting influence and then just playing a large point. And then maybe your opponent blocks your other one so you take the other large point. Like Just like Gote games like all day. There's no chance I'm going to find that SGF. That tree again is there. Ha! Found it. Never mind. We got it. So alright. Plays here. Kind of underneath or over. Comes out, comes out. Threatens to uh, cut. Nizine is also following, thank you for that. So it looks like that connected, but the left is still dead. So we need shape here for ourselves, so we get that. Of course it gets poked by black. This is actually a little bit mean. He is actually threatening to cut through right now, so Black is defending. Which leads into a defense, which leads into a defense, which leads into shape. Throws in trying to kill, or at least put pressure on him. Goes ahead and connects. And now we've got a game where white has to reduce this center bit. But it looks like it's not that difficult, because we've got an eye already. As you can see here, looking at all the Aji, looking at all the poking, Same thing here. White picking up territory on the right by forcing all of these moves. In fact, if he wanted to, he could keep doing it too. He could drop, drop down yet again. But Poking shapes. Alas, we do have to not die. 
We should be okay with our eye shape now. And black is still looking for a way to kill white. Now this next move is weird. This next move I thought was one of the weirdest of the entire game. Because I could not figure out where white was going to play from here in order to not be dead. And you got an idea? I'll give you a hint. It kills. It's the only way that white has to live here. You're on the right idea, Saikta. Oh my god, seriously? We're still on the E1? No fire. That was like so last game. So that's M9. You're all close. This immediately threatens to kill the two stones, and it immediately threatens to surround the top stones. That that is that is a move. Saves cutting stones, surrounds, maximizes liberties, strengthens group. See what we can do here. Not a whole lot. Getting some extra liberties, but now it's too late. Those are now dead. Empty triangle, I know shape. Yep. Yeah. Empty triangle is the best shape, man. Um, I missed a move. Oh, no I didn't. Pokes, pokes. Has to fall back. Now we're nice and alive. That's not the move. Where did black go? Oh, black went here. It's like, yep, 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 we're, we're still in trouble. Surrounding, yep, still surrounding. Throw in. Now this at least went well. Because we could play here. But this, and this is Mii, right? So we're disconnected. Which means this suddenly has to live and it can't. So when he throws in here, that's a must, as is that to not be dead. So we did manage to capture some stones. And because we managed to capture some stones, we're actually leading now as white, as black, sorry. Oops. I, my order here is so bad. Right. There, 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 there. Got it. In Soviet Russia, empty triangle kills you. Well, no. This, well, mm, empty triangle did kill the Blackstone, so I guess that kind of works. And now we have end. Oh my god, nope. I suck at endgame. I would have. See, I immediately didn't even look at the next move. I'm like, okay, it's gonna connect there, clearly, so let's just click it. New. You can play here first, because he doesn't want to die. So that was better endgame than what I was about to do. Connecting, yep, that's a good endgame too. Yeah, M19, that was just way too fast. That was just way too fast. How about now? Can we, can we play it now? Okay, now we can play it. Wow. So I would have missed all that wonderful sweet endgame. Forcing move here to force left to live. Forcing move here to save two stones in Sente before going back and doing that. Bad endgame. Bad endgame. I guess it's a good thing that we chose a game uh, to review, have the 9P review that doesn't go to endgame. 
So we're not going to hear how bad my endgame is for like 15 minutes straight. So that that's good, right? So when we have that game reviewed, at least we can look forward to that. Make sure we're alive. Poke, poke, poke. Next time we'll choose one point game. <laughs> Yeah, I gave it. I gave you guys uh, the chance to vote. You voted on the two-week group game, not the one-point game. Thanks for that, by the way. So yeah, from here the game pretty much just goes straight to end game, and then Black res wins by resignation. Nothing uh, really happens. It's just fills in end game and stuff. But yeah. We saw the, sa the same idea in two different games from the like top players of their respective countries. Like Shen is like, going to be one of the top players in Korea because uh, she has like top player in China. And when they want to build, they don't really build things by. And when they build, they don't really build with um, like those Gote moves, giving their opponent Sente to start like attacking and reducing and using that to their advantage. They kind of do it. Uh, by leaning on their opponent, by pressuring their opponent, by seeing if they can get those forcing moves in the end game, things like that. That's a very important difference between how a lot of amateurs and professional build up. And I hope you, maybe when you find yourself wanting to build up uh, your influence, use your influence, uh, play the influential game, you look for forcing moves first rather than like where's the largest point on the board, plop a stone there and go tame, and then just see what happens. Maybe you'll like the results just a little bit better, and you'll really confound your opponent as he has to respond to you and just watch it just builds and builds and builds. But alright, I'm gonna eat now, so I will see you next time, everybody.